Well, as I was worshiping this morning, um, the Lord began to minister to me and bless my heart. If you don't mind, I'll share with you what he told me, um, and I think it'll bless you too. You okay with that? Yeah. Well, it was just very encouraging. He said, um, he said, first of all, I'm on your side. I'm with you. He said, I've seen all the years, all the hard work, all the tears. Sorry. I've seen it all. I'm with you. And it's coming up. He said, I'm blessing you and doing some things, answering your prayers, which I'm so thankful for. Um, Because a lot of my prayers are focused around how well we do here, and uh, specifically on people seeing God for who he really is. Um, That's probably my number one heart's desire as a pastor, is that people know God and know the person that I've found him to be in my life, the way he's related to me, and that you would experience that as well. Because I promise when you do, you'll be very endeared to him. (laughs) and he'll mean more to you than just a God that seems to be present sometimes and he doesn't seem to be present some other times and you don't know what he's up to and you wish he would do this all that just disappears in an intimate relationship with God you know him and you know exactly how he feels and even when things you can't understand what's going on or why you know one thing and that has God has your back He's with you and for you. Amen. So I wanted to share that with you. If that encourage you, encourages you, I hope it does. Because it encouraged me. Got me all teary-eyed. So um, I just didn't expect it. Way too often for me, I'm just focused on getting the work done. Go. Do, let's do this. Um. Austin's seen that side of me. <laughs> when we were doing sprinklers, we, I'm like, dude, we pull up, we get out of the truck, and we go. We don't chit-chat, we don't dilly-dally, we don't, you know, we don't fool around. We just go after it. Um, I know we have to talk to the person or whatever, but a lot of times Parker would be talking to him, and I'm digging. You know, I'm like, you talk to him, I'll dig. Let's go. And I have that approach sometimes, and God has to stop me and go, you can celebrate (laughs) and you can be, you can receive some of the things that I want to give you, and I'm like, yes sir, I can, I can do that. Because that's not my focus. So how's this series been for you? Enlightening? Good? We're going to get into it a little bit more this morning. Um, This is one of those deals where I can stop Anytime, so don't worry that I have. um, Jenny Lee's already seen how many scriptures I have. (laughs) She's got to be going, oh my gosh. Um, But this is one of those deals, Jenny Lee, where we can stop anytime and I'll be mindful of the time. Not that she's ever said anything to me about it. She's very kind. Um, But we're going to look at the name of Jesus and how it was uh, operating in the early church. And then connect that to how he wants to operate in our lives. So last week I asked you some questions about what does the name of Jesus mean to you? What are you doing with it? What have you done with it? What are you planning on doing with it? And if you're like, I don't know, then I trust at the end of today's message and then when Ryan is going to be ministering next week, he's also going to be on the name of Jesus. We specifically felt led to to speak on this and to go through this so that the name of Jesus would take a different place in your life, a higher place in your life. Um, And that it would be something that you understand what it's for, how it's used, and uh, put it to work. All right. Mark 16. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew, he said, make disciples. Make disciples. 
So making a disciple takes a little bit more than just telling somebody Jesus died and came back from the dead, and if you want to be saved and go to heaven, come up here and then let and then just let whatever happens happen. Making a disciple is actually getting into someone's life and helping them walk through the times when they don't understand what's what's going on and how to do it. Um, we're very how-to around here because I am how-to. Don't tell me a lot of wonderful high and lofty things without telling me how to achieve that. Don't tell me you too can be a millionaire and just leave me there and go, I'm like, well, how? How do I do that? How do I, what do I invest in? You know, and then just say, well, you know, you got to be smart with money. Duh. <laughs> you know, thanks. <laughs> and then, you know, basically leave it up to you to go home and do the research. And although I can't, we can't, we don't always have time to get every single detail of what you're supposed to do. You do have the Holy Spirit with you, and you can go, Lord, I, I want to do this. Help me walk it out. See? But we will try to give you, we try to equip you. Well, we are equipping you. You got to equip someone. So if I give uh, Ansley the task to clean the church, I'm like, listen, we need to clean the church. Well, where's the mop? We have no mop. Where's the mop bucket? We don't have a mop bucket. Can I have a key? No, you can't have a key. <laughs> but I want you to clean the church. She's going to look at me and say, like, are you daft? I mean, have you lost it? I need something to clean it with, right? And think of our Lord. I mean, we were tasked to go make disciples. Did he give us anything to do it with? Yes. Of course. It'd be silly of him not to. Right? And one of the things that the early church had, and the late church, I guess we want to call it that, well, it's all the same church. They have the same thing that we have, or we have the same thing that they have, which is the power of God in the name of Jesus to use to help people. We'll see how they used it. He said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. What are they going to do? They'll cast out demons in his name. They'll speak with new tongues in his name. They'll take up serpents in his name. They'll drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them in his name. They will lay, lay hands on the sick and they will recover in his name. They're going to do all those things in his name. And as we learn from our very first message, in the name, Jesus is granting the church the power of attorney and the legal right to use his name without restriction. There's no limits on this that God's putting on you. We'll only be limited by our knowledge or lack of understanding of it and unwillingness to use it or ignorance. But there's no limits on the name. And no limits that God is putting on us. He's like, nah, it's, it's not just for certain people and then other people can't really use it. You rookies and you young ones, you know, take it easy with the name. Or don't just go off and go wild with the name of Jesus. None of that. Use it. Right? Take it. Do something with it. What are you doing with it? Right? And then Acts 1.8 says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and shall be witnesses of me in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So we Pentecostals, or we people that believe in the full gospel, we love talking about the power. We got the power. And you have, Jesus said, the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So being baptized in the Holy Spirit is an integral part of this whole combination. And I specifically want to kind of highlight something that stood out to me as we were, as I was studying this, um, so that we can, and I want to kind of bring it up to the forefront to contrast it so that we get a handle on what God's trying to tell us. And then I felt impressed the Holy Spirit to do this. So let's just begin with Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Um, Jesus said, he, he preached a sermon, told him about Jesus and everything, and he said, let every one of you be baptized, and then what's the next phrase? In the name. What does that mean? To baptize means to place into. And when you were baptized or when you were born again, you were baptized into the name. Okay? 
So when you're married, you're baptized, in, if you're a wife, you're baptized into your husband's name. You're placed into his name. You take on his name. Good or bad. <laughs> but Jesus is good. I mean, okay? So, I mean, I had to say good or bad because sometimes taking their name means people can associate things with you because you have that name that's associated with that group or that family. And you're like, that's not my family. I didn't come. That's not my family's name. I'm a such and such. Well, now that you've taken his name, everything that goes with being in that family is now yours. So if you're in the Rockefeller family or the Gates family or a wealthy family, what? People think of what? They think you're wealthy, right? Or whatever your last name is. So we have the name of who? Jesus. And so everything associated with who he is, what he did, and how he is, is now associated with you. You have that association. And not only have it, you have that designation, and in the world of the heavenly angels and the uh, demons, they recognize you as Christ. We're the body of Christ. So when they see you, they see Jesus. Now the demons see that, but they don't want to let you know that. Right? Right? They don't want you to know they're scared of you. They don't, want, they don't want you to know that when you get out of bed and you start making your declarations and you're praying and all that, that that frightens them and that they don't want any part of that. They have to pull it together and try to trick you into thinking that they have something over you when they have nothing. Yeah. And they're masters at deceiving people into thinking they really don't have something that they have. All right? So we're baptized in the name for the remission of the sins and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Now, <clears throat> this incident takes several chapters or a couple chapters, but we're going to look at it here. Um, so Peter, went, Peter and John went to the gate to, or to the temple to pray and they passed a guy <clears throat> and I'm not going to set up the story in detail, but in Acts chapter 3 verse 6 says, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have but what did he say after that? But what I do have. What did he have? Well, now if you're going to talk to a lot of Pentecostals and, and Charismatics, they're going to say, I have the power. But Jesus, or Peter didn't say, I have power. And he didn't, once he say silver and gold, I don't have, but what I have I give you, and then start speaking in tongues, doing the shandos, and lay hands on him. He didn't start doing that. What did he do? He said, in the name. Now, when we teach on this, we realize and recognize that it's one of the gifts of the Spirit called working of miracles, which is connected to the Holy Spirit operating in your life. And it is the working of miracles. But how did it come about? By someone that knew that they had the name. And their honor and their respect for the name was such that they said, I'm going to give this person something that they need in the name. And I can do that in the name. Can you do that in the name? Well, I'm not really spiritual, Pastor. Doesn't matter. I don't know that much about the Bible, Pastor. Doesn't matter. I misbehaved this week. If you repented, it doesn't matter. But you don't know my past. Doesn't matter. You have the name. Right? Think of, I did try to do extensive research on finding out when this happened. And this is very close to the day of Pentecost, and when it happened, it's not too long after that. I don't know how long. I couldn't get specific. But just think about this. Peter, what had he been guilty of doing in the recent past? And I don't mean like yesterday, but in the recent past. What had he been, what had he been guilty of? Denying that he even knew the Lord. Did that matter? Evidently, Peter was like, it didn't, it didn't matter to him or Jesus that any of that happened. He said, what I have, 
I'm going to give you. And if you look in the first chapter of Acts, you see where Jesus spoke to them for 40 days. He appeared to them with many proofs and spoke to them uh, about things pertaining to the kingdom. Well, in the kingdom of God <coughs> and in the kingdom of heaven, <coughs> there is a name that's above every name. <coughs> There's a name that's been given to Jesus, and Jesus doesn't need that name for himself. And being seated at the right hand of the Father, he doesn't need that name, and that name is not only to worship and adore and sing about, which we should do. Peter didn't go, you know, I just love the name of Jesus. Jesus, you're so wonderful. Oh, and he didn't start preaching to the cripple and say, I wish you knew the Lord. Let's just worship the name of Jesus. He used it to do something for this man. In the name. Remember when we said, when you say in the name, it's the same. So that whatever the condition that the man had, heard Jesus talking. Going over it slow so we get it. Not because you're slow. Because sometimes it takes that extra effort. So it wasn't speaking in tongues. And it wasn't talking about the power. It was the name. See, I believe, as, as I'm going to say it again, as Pentecostals and people, charismatics, and people that believe in the full gospel, we like to connect the power being released with speaking in tongues. And we should speak in tongues, and we should get built up, and we should do that. I'm not saying we, we need to, to neglect that. We need to increase it, if anything. But when we're called upon to minister to somebody, and we need to pray for them, or talk to them, or deal with something that's going on in their life, we don't speak in tongues over it. What do we do? In the name. And anybody, whether you're spirit-filled or not spirit-filled, can use the name. It's belong, it belongs to the church. Right? Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Let's look at Peter's explanation. They said, how did this happen? So there's a whole group of people going, we know this guy. He's never walked. He's been here for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. Years. This dude's been here. How did this happen? And note, again, Peter in verse 16 of chapter 3 didn't go, it's the power of God through speaking in tongues <laughs> that did it. What did he say? He said, and his name, talking about Jesus' name, through faith in his name has made this man strong. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. His name through faith in his name. Love that. His name through faith in his name. How much faith do you... You don't have to have a whole lot of knowledge to believe that the name will do what Jesus did. It's all centered around Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and his conquests of the forces of darkness. It's all about him and what he did. And when you use the name, we're just piggybacking on what Jesus did. It has zero to do with what you've done, your past, how good you are, how bad you are, how much scripture you know, how much you don't know. Whether you're a good boy or a bad boy, how you feel, especially how you feel. I don't really feel all that spiritual today. It has nothing to do with it. It's the name. In the forces, in the sicknesses, in the things that come against us, recognize the name. So that when you use the name, things happen. We don't hope they happen. Things happen. So then, of course, they got in trouble for doing that. And notice when he set before the council of the Sanhedrin, he said when they'd set him, and when they had set them, this is Peter and John and some of the other disciples in their midst, they said, <clears throat> by what power 
or by what name have you done this? They recognize that there's some kind of authority and something happened here, and what did they want to know? How much have you prayed? By what name have you done this? Who, who is authorizing you to do this? You did a miracle. They weren't doing miracles. You know why? They don't have the name. They're not baptized into the name. Jesus is taking businessmen, fishermen, tax collectors, government workers, ordinary people, and saying, I'm going to give you my name, and my name is going to do it. Just use the name. And Peter's like, I have the name. So the guy says, can I have some money? And he's like, I don't have money at the moment, but I don't have money. But here's something I have in the name. Get up. And he got up. And they were like, what's happening here? Whose name? <clears throat> Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Let it be known to you all and all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him. Now, notice here the connection that is made between by the name and by him. They're used equally, right? So who actually... Cause this man to come up. Jesus. Jesus did it, right? Did he do it? He did it. How did it come about? Somebody who knew they had the name said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and Jesus like, oh, then by a cracky, we better get this man up. Somebody's using my name. By a cracky, sorry about that. The family expression just came out. Someone's using my name. I've got to do something. I've got to respond. I've got to back this up. All of heaven backed it up. The angels are like, this is, watch this. Something's going to happen. He used the name. If we could pause, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and then just pause and go, okay, news bulletin of all the spiritual beings in the universe, somebody is using the name, and then Jesus himself is going, that's right, they're using my name. Holy Spirit, you better cause the strength to come to his body. It better happen. Someone's using my name. News bulletin. What's he going to say? It's going to happen in my name. Get up. Yep, we better make him get up then. Can you see it? If you're like me, I didn't, re I didn't really kind of focus on it as much. I've used the name. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to use it more. Amen. And I'm expecting things to move when I use the name. You don't have to see them. In heaven, earth, and under the earth, no other name. The name above every name. All spiritual beings. Recognize demon spirits, angelic spirits, holy spirits, the name. Someone's using the name. And what Jesus wants is for it to be using, popping like popcorn all over the world. Here, there, everywhere, the name, the name, the name. And he's got the, he's got the stuff to make everything that people request and say in the name to make it happen. That's how great our God is. <laughs> I'm trying to equip you this morning. Eh, we are equipping you this morning. With what? With the name. So you know the name. You can use the name. <clears throat> Acts 4, 17, verse 18. But so that it spreads no further. Turn, all right, so can you hear this now in their, in their comments? We've got to stop this. Why do they want to stop it? Well, obviously it's the devil, but why do they want to stop it? Because it's that, and they don't have the ability to do that. So what's going to happen? The crowds, anybody who's sick or lame or in pain appreciates when someone says in the name, <laughs> pain leave, and it leaves. They're like, I like that. I want that. It's, it's common sense. 
And when you can't do that, and then this ordinary fisherman, businessman, the only thing that they're different, the difference, these people know Scripture better, they're better at keeping the law than everyone else, but they don't have something. They don't have the name. So that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on, watch, they speak to no man in this name. That's how threatened they were. Don't even speak to anybody in this name. And let's just highlight this again. They didn't say, we don't want you running around speaking in tongues. Because they didn't scare them. They didn't want you running around saying you have power. That didn't scare them. What scared them? The name. Do not use this name. Thank you. It's coming to you. <laughs> Are you receiving it? What is wrong with you? What physically, what, what emotionally, what sickness is, is plaguing you? Use the name. You don't have to have any special dispensation. You don't have to call anybody. You don't need to ask the Lord if it's okay. <laughs> Through the name and faith in his name. The name will make you whole. The name will make someone else whole. If you're like me, I, was, I had way overcomplicated this. Way overcomplicated it. And I, I would get into, you know, I, I'm not prayed up. Um, am I prayed up enough? Uh, you know, I, I put in however many hours or minutes of praying, and, and I don't know, is that enough? I mean, should that, should that work? Uh, you know, and then I scan my memory. Am I, am I walking in the light? I'm doing that. And it was all about who? Me. And God's like, I mean, do that. Pray. Stay walking with God. That's right. But as far as having confidence in something, put your confidence and trust in the name. Amen. So that when the name is used, you're like, yeah, I use the name and that's it. You know? <clears throat> Praise God. And we've limited the name to just getting people born again. And they can't get born again without it. Right? So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. They didn't call them and command them not to have prayer meetings and speak in tongues. What did they want them not to do? Do not use that name. <laughs> so, of course, what did the disciples do? They got together and they're like, all right, we've been threatened. Verse 29 of Acts chapter 4, Now, Lord, look on their threats. And then you hear what they said? They said, we can't use the name. And grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the ministers and the people that have prayed up and the people who are speaking in tongues all the time. Nope. Through what? Through the name. The signs and wonders are connected to what? The name. I'm praying this gets there and sinks down. What is going on? All right, we need an illustration. So um, <clears throat> there was a pastor that... Uh, he had to go do a funeral, and his wife um, was left at the house, and some visiting ministers were there as well, and he had to step out to go take care of uh, church business for a minute. And so they were there, and while they were there, their child had a seizure. <clears throat> so the child is convulsing and, and having a seizure while they're all in the room. And this is all a bunch of preachers and preachers' wife, and this is what's happening. So they rebuked it. They... Uh, prayed over it, they laid hands on them, they commanded it to stop, they did everything they knew to do, and finally this preacher's wife just said, Jesus. 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 
deep. And they all didn't started to pick it up. They didn't sing it. They just said it. Gee. Gee. <clears throat> and pretty soon they were all just saying, gee. Gee. Jesus, over and over and over again. And the convulsion stopped. Why? Because of the name. They went for a while. Child was fine. Child started having another seizure. So being the brilliant people that they are, they did all the things that they did before. They prayed. They commanded it to stop. They laid hands on the child. They were speaking. They were doing all that. Then the child's mother was like, gee, 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 Jesus. They all just said the name. When the child stopped, it quit. It, it quit and didn't come back. Because of what? The name. Would God that we would have that much confidence in the name. And that we would just realize that that's all it takes. There was a couple that was, uh, they were in a car and they were going through an intersection and they quickly, re I mean, a car came up upon them that was going fast that blew through the light, they had the right of way, and was headed toward them, and there was an imminent collision coming, and the people, the Christians in the car, they just said, Jesus! And somehow, nothing happened. Next thing you know, they were going down the road when they should have been T-boned and been in an awful wreck. And all they did was cry out and say the name. Amen. There's power in the name. There's victory in the name. There's healing in the name. There's deliverance in the name. Freedom in the name. It's all in the name. Remember me talking about struggling with something, like if you're struggling with some kind of sin? There's freedom in the name. Just use the name. Satan has convinced us that there's a whole lot of things that we need to do. And I'm going to be blunt here for a second, not with anyone in particular, but just if we think we're going to walk our Christian life without dealing with demons, we're sadly mistaken. And in this country, we pet them. We medicate them. People have demons, and they're oppressed, and I don't mean they're possessed like witch doctors and silly stuff like that, because there are witch doctors. But I'm just saying, people are oppressed. They have serious issues going on in their life. And we get into all these things about doctors and medication and this and that. And thank God for doctors and medication and the things that they can do when sometimes, very often, more times than not, all we need to do is do what? Use the name. If you know somebody that's suffering, if you know somebody that's dealing with something and they are, they are under it, they're just like oppressed and what, with whatever it is, your crazy ex-boyfriend is causing you problems, use the name. How, pastor? You say in the name of Jesus, you foul spirits that are causing problems through so-and-so and say their name. You stop messing with me. Stop causing me problems in Jesus' name. And guess what? Those spirits have to stop. Not because you're so special, but because of the name. And let me tell you something. Anybody that's harassing you or causing you problems or plaguing you or a sickness that's plaguing you, it's of the devil. It didn't come from God not your lot in life. But since my lot in life that has to suffer with fill in the blank crazy ex-boyfriend nope, it's not. Use the name. So guess what they did? They used the name of Jesus and miracles and signs and wonders happened. So they got in trouble again. 
So in Acts chapter 5, it said, uh, they got him back in there and they said, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? You're still doing it. And look, you filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. And then Gamaliel goes, hey guys, calm down. Because they, they said, we're going to stone him and we're going to kill him. Because Peter said, judge for yourself whether it's not for us, right for us to obey God rather than man. And they were like, we represent God. And they thought they were telling them what to do in the name of God, but they were totally wrong. You know, I looked it up. And if my study is correct, so I'm going to put a disclaimer on it, one of the first people to actually speak in the name of the Lord was Moses, the Pharaoh. That's the first place you really see someone saying, a, a man of God saying, in the name of the Lord of hosts, let my people go. In that name. And then David did it against Goliath. He said, I'm not coming to you in my own strength. I'm coming to you in the name of Jehovah, right? So it was kind of distantly or sporadically used. But Jesus, after thwarting the uh, powers of darkness, just said, look, if you have any trouble with the devil, just use my name. I, I defeated him. I dealt with him. It's like when my kids were acting up and Tammy would say, do I need to call your dad? And they're like, no. No. Right? Because I had told them, and this is going to sound strict, but I wanted to make a point because I know boys. I mean, I, I didn't raise any girls, but I know boys. Boys are rambunctious, and um, sometimes a woman's voice isn't what, what they respond to. They just seem to think if it's a woman talking to them, they don't have to do anything about it. If you've ever had to deal with boys, maybe just kids in general, and I was like, we're not having that in my house. If Tammy tells you to do something, you're going to do it. Because I'm backing it up. So I told him, I said, if your mother has to call me at work, and I come home, I said, everybody's going to get it. I said, I'm going to come home, I'm going to grab the paddle on my way in, I'm going to line all of you up, spank all of you, then start asking questions. So do not have your mother have to call me at work. If she tells you to do something, you do it. What am I, what am I authorizing? What am I saying? My name. And so Tammy, they get it. They get too far out of control. And Tammy said, I think I'm going to have to call your dad. And they're like, no, no. We'll calm down. All right? That's just a small inkling or an, a short illustration of what happens to demons when you go, am I going to have to get out the name? No, no. Do not get the name of Jesus out. To which you should respond, I'm absolutely going to get the name of Jesus out. We don't negotiate with devils. We tell them what to do, and they do it. Right? <laughs> In the name. Is this helping you? You're awfully quiet this morning. I know you're processing. So they agreed with Gamaliel, who said, listen, just leave them alone. If this is of God, you're not going to be able to stop it anyway. And they called for the apostles. They beat them. They commanded them they should not speak, what, in the name. Don't speak in the They didn't want them to do it uh, and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now watch this in Acts chapter 9. We're getting ready to close here, so if you're all wondering where we are. I told you, we can stop anytime. But we need to get there. Some of you got it already. Some of you are like, what? And it's those people that I want to just drive it home. Use the name. Speak in the name. Pray in the name. Deal with the devil in the name. Deal with your crazy ex-boyfriend in the name. Deal with sickness in the name. Deal with people that are harassing you in the name. Pray for the church in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so, Paul gets converted. Um, and he starts um, preaching in the name. Well, before that, Ananias is, is um, 
told to go minister to him. And he's like, Lord, this guy is going to kill us. He's been authorized to kill us and to put us in prison. And Jesus said this to Ananias. He said, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name. And the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer. He didn't say for my sake. He said what? For my name's sake. You getting that? Why didn't Jesus, in talking to Ananias, just say, I'm going to show him how much he must suffer for my sake? Can you see how he's equating his name with him? Jesus himself is saying, if you're doing it in my name, if you're bearing my name, it's me. Remember what he told Paul? He said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. Paul didn't know who Jesus was. I don't want to say he didn't know, but he wasn't persecuting Jesus physically because Jesus was at the right hand of God. He was persecuting the church, and Jesus said, you're persecuting me. Me and the church are one. We're the same. You do something to the church, and you do something to Jesus. Flip it around. When the church does something, Jesus is doing it. Let me say that again. When you do something to the church, so when you talk about your brother, you talk about your sister, when you gossip about them, and when you criticize them, you're criticizing who? Jesus. So don't do it. But flip it around. When your brother or sister is doing something. When you're doing something, it's Jesus doing it. Use the name. It's okay. You have permission. I promise you, they'll go, you're not authorized. You don't know enough. You don't know enough about the Bible. You're too young. You're too new to this. I've only been going to church for a couple years now. Blah, blah, blah. He'll give you every reason in the world not to pull out the name and use it on it. Don't let them do it. Just say, I don't have to know anything. I have the name. I don't have to be smart. I don't have to know a bunch of scripture. I don't have to be a minister. I don't have to be any of that. I have the name, and I'm using it on you, meat, meathead. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to listen to you in your lies. I'm using the name on you. Paul did what? He was with, with them at Jerusalem coming and going out. And he, this is Paul now, right after he was converted, he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Let's just end with this one. So they were, Paul and Silas or Barnabas were ministering somewhere. It doesn't really matter in this particular case who it was that was with him because there was a lady who was possessed of an evil spirit. And he, she said, this is Paul, these, these men are going to tell you how to be saved. And he followed them around saying, these people are going to tell you how to be saved. These people are going to tell you. And it annoyed him. It was annoying. Demons are annoying. (laughs) And God doesn't want you to live in an annoyed state of being. He wants you to have peace. So she did this for many days. It says, Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, not to the girl, to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he he came out that very hour. That was the end of it. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her in the name of Jesus. That's the end. Something's got to happen. Demons got to go. Remember we talked about that last week? Jesus, they said, please let us go into the pigs. And Jesus said, go. What's the difference? What would we have to do? In the name of Jesus, go. That's all we got to do is add in the name of Jesus and then say what he said, and it's the same thing as him saying. Aren't there any requirements, Pastor? Aren't there any, do I have to, do I have to do anything? Do I have to pray extra hard? Mm -mm. The only thing I suggest you do is go over these scriptures and familiarize yourself 
with what is yours in the name of Jesus and what you are responsible to do and what you're able to do in the name of Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to limit you. We, the church, and I'm going to put myself in that category, me in particular, have really not expanded or used the name to its fullest extent in my life. I put up with things that I didn't have to put up with. I suffered things that I, I mean, as Christians, we do suffer things. So we're not saying that you have a life flowery beds of ease, as someone said. But there's way too much that I put up with because I didn't use the name and I didn't spend time familiarizing myself with the name and using the name and suffered unnecessarily. I don't know about you, but I'm not into suffering unnecessarily. The, the, the apostles were, they suffered some beatings, but it was necessary, right? They, they did something and they got punished for it by the, and persecuted because Jesus said you're going to be persecuted for me, right? So if you do a miracle or if you do something in the name of Jesus and somebody punches you or something like that or they say something bad about you or they criticize you and say you just think, they, they think they're a little Jesus running around and they say ugly things, fine, you're going to suffer that. But there's no need to suffer unnecessarily. Suffer torment. Suffer uh, continuing to struggle with a certain sin and repeatedly do it. You don't have to suffer that way. Just use the name. Heaven's backing you up every step of the way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why don't we just make a declaration here real quick. Are you ready to, to talk to the devil for a second? Three of you are. What about the rest of you? Right? So I want to show you how to do this so that you're not like, uh, you know, you don't walk out of here and the devil starts beating up on you and go, what did he tell me to do again? Um, and then just get punished. <laughs> I promise. He'll do it. He does not want you to do that. He doesn't want you to know this. He doesn't want you to use the name. Right? All right, so I want you to repeat after me. Everybody ready? Satan, you're a liar, a jerk, an idiot. You're stupid. You're also defeated. You have no authority at all to do anything to me. You can't control me. You can't make me do anything I don't want to do. So I'm going to use the name on you. In Jesus' name. I break your power over my life. In Jesus' name, get behind me. Leave me alone. Stop tormenting me. Stop tempting me. Get out of my life. In Jesus' name, I speak to my body. In Jesus' name, body, be healed. Sickness, go away. In Jesus' name, healing manifest in Jesus' name. How are we doing? That's how it works, right? You don't have to be nice to the devil. You have to respect the fact that he has access. You can't say, well, you never can touch me ever again. He's going to come back. So what? Bring out the name again. <laughs> Get your bazooka with the name of Jesus on it. All right? You ready? I got more where that came from. I got the name and this and that. And start quoting scripture. You remember the little paper or the wrapping paper tube I had? Get out your sword of the spirit. Greater is he that is in me. I'm more than a conqueror through him who loved me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. There's no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. No condemnation on me. I'm not taking any condemnation in the name. I'm not taking it. I'm not going to live guilty in the name of Jesus. Guilt is probably one of the things that people suffer the most, unnecessarily. I just feel guilty, Pastor. I just don't know. I don't know if the Lord loves me or not. He loves you. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want you feeling guilty every day. Good grief. Remember, Jesus saying, your will be done in 
on earth as it is where? Is anybody feeling guilty in heaven? Anybody? Is anybody moping around the streets of gold going, you know, Lord, I wish I could just do more? I don't know if the Lord loves me. No! And he wants you to experience that here. Amen. Amen. Use the name. 